we discussed the second speaking task, Describe a Picture, and presented a comprehensive strategy for addressing the task while reviewing the speaking criteria for the test. In our video today, we're going to be looking at questions 4 through 9, Respond to Questions, and Respond to Questions Using Information Provided. Let's go ahead and look at the first task, questions 4 through 6. Once again, we'll be using the TOEIC sample uh, download from ETS, the speaking and writing. Uh, you'll see the link at the bottom of this video. So we're just going to jump in and look at an example from this sample packet. Let's look at the directions. In this part of the test, you will answer three questions. For each question, begin responding immediately after you hear a beep. No preparation time is provided. You will have 15 seconds to respond to questions 4 and question 5, and 30 seconds to respond to question 6. Now, during the test, you will hear this information, so let's read it. Imagine that a Canadian marketing firm is doing research in your country. You have agreed to participate in a telephone interview about television viewing. Question number four. How often do you watch television? Question number five. What kinds of programs do you usually watch? Question number six. Describe your favorite television program. Now remember, on the test, uh, you will get each question, and then immediately a beep will follow to provide time for you to respond. So as they said in the video, uh, questions four and question five, uh, you will be given 15 seconds to respond to four and 15 seconds to respond to five. The final question, question six, the third, um, you'll be given 30 seconds to respond. Now for these question types, you will see the questions appear on the screen. So so what do we notice? Well, again, the questions all relate to the same speaking prompt. But not much time is given for those first two questions, while the third uh, requires a longer response. But you'll probably notice that you're given no preparation time. Basically, the only time you have to prepare is when the narrator actually reads the question to you. So the first thing we need to identify is what exactly are they looking for in these question types? Well, again, for, for questions 4 through 6 and 7 through 9, they're looking at all of the things we've addressed in the previous videos, pronunciation, intonation, grammar, vocabulary, and cohesion. And again, if you need a, to review that information, I would recommend going back and looking at the previous videos. Today, though, we're going to look at the two new criteria, relevance of content and completeness of content. So uh, the scoring guide, uh, again, three is considered the maximum score. But let's look particularly uh, at how they describe what they're looking for in terms of the responses. Because some of these questions look like they could actually have very short answers. Well, the first thing to recognize is what they want is a full, relevant, and socially appropriate reply to the question. So the idea here is, if you were to hear this question in real life, how would you answer it so that it could be understood? Now, in the questions 7 through 9, which we're going to be looking at a little later in the video, uh, we do also have to make sure that we're looking at information from the prompt in an accurate way. So in questions 7 through 9, they'll actually give us a, a visual graphic that we have to look at and answer questions. But the key that I want to focus on here are these ideas of what is considered relevant and what is considered full, because these are the two ideas the TOEIC seems to be focusing on. So again, we want to make sure that when we give an answer that the vocabulary is appropriate and that, of course, the structures uh, fulfill the demands of what the task is asking. So we're giving answers that are at least somewhat grammatical. So again, three is the highest score. Uh, two is kind of, again, in the middle. Notice that there is, you already see from the two level, some uh, negative information in the uh, response description. So for example, it says it's not complete or fully appropriate. So really the key here is in order to get a three, we have to meet certain minimum uh, goals here. So let's take a look at those. So first off, when they refer to the idea of relevance, relevance is referring to how accurate our response is. For example, in the first question, how often do you watch television, 
The basic idea here is that we have to give an answer that directly answers the question, and it has to be logical. So, for example, here's an answer. I watch TV about three to five times a week for about four hours each time. So in this case, notice it, it directly answers the question itself. It's relevant to the question. A lack of relevance, so in other words, uh, something that would get you less than a three score, would be giving an answer that does not answer what the question is essentially asking. Now when they talk about completeness, the idea of completeness is referring to how in-depth the response is. In other words, did we give just a two to three word response versus a 20 or 30 word response? Now of course that's not necessary for every question. Uh, you'll see more of this when we get to the uh, third question, which requires more time. But did you attempt to elaborate on the response instead of just directly answering the question? So, for example, in the second question, when it says, what kinds of programs do you usually watch, um, if you said something like news, well, again, that might be relevant. In other words, it does answer the question, but it's not very complete. It doesn't give us much more than that. So the first thing we need to recognize is we need to give you know, good information to the response, but also give information that seems a little more in-depth. Now, this brings us to our first uh, TOEIC hint. And the idea we need to remind ourselves is that the test itself is scored holistically. And I think that becomes a lot more important as we reach the more difficult tasks on the test. Now remember, holistically means that they're looking at your score overall as a whole. So for this task, we need to make sure we give a relevant answer, but we also need to make sure it has some form of elaboration. Now once again, some of the questions are fairly easy, but I don't think they want just a one-word answer we need to give a little more information. So keep in mind though we could say a lot of things but if we don't say things that are relevant that's not going to help us either. We have to give information that does both. So we have to be able to integrate all of those criteria our pronunciation, our intonation, vocabulary, grammar, and so on in our responses. Now, let's demonstrate here using that first question, how often do you watch television? What I'm going to demonstrate now are questions that meet one of the criteria, but then the final one will meet both of them. Let's, let's take a look. So, for example, here is an answer that's relevant, but not complete. A lot. Okay, it, de it definitely answers the question, but doesn't give us a lot of information. Here is one that doesn't uh, satisfy either. Nope. Notice in this case, this is not a yes or no question. We have to give information. And of course, since it's only one word, it's not complete either. Now, my, my general feeling here is that you have to give an answer that's at least relevant. If you don't give a relevant answer, uh, whether it's complete or not doesn't matter. You must give at least a relevant answer. So at least in the first example, you would receive some score, whereas in the second answer, you would probably receive nothing. Here's one that's not relevant, but it is complete. Television is a wonderful medium where people can learn much about the world. Again, sounds really nice, except it doesn't answer the question. So in this case, you might receive a 1, perhaps even a 0. Finally, here's an answer that satisfies both criteria. I watch television almost every night, sometimes 2 to 3 hours at a time. So in this case, we gave an answer that was relevant, and we also gave an answer that gave a little more elaboration. Part of the idea here is we want to prove our English ability. So we want to give a few more uh, words and ideas. So once again, the TOEIC is looking at your overall appraisal of your speaking ability. But for the remainder of the activities on the test, it is apparent now that the answers you give must at least be relevant to the topics. So in this case, you could give wonderfully detailed answers, but if they're not relevant, you're probably not getting a good score. So just keep in mind, at minimum, a complete response must make sense first. So as we go back to our questions, the key to think about now is to look at the third. Because the third is where it really gets a little more difficult. Well, so how do we answer it? So for the third question, how do we answer it? Well, let's look at a couple of basics first. It does seem quite apparent that the third question requires more elaboration because we have 30 seconds to respond instead of 15. So that is the expectation. 
But I think you will notice that many times the third question is what we call open-ended. It's not a WH question looking for specific information. It's asking you basically to give your opinion or your feeling about something. So notice, for example, in our question, they use the word describe. So again, in this case, they, they're not looking for a, a specific answer to a WH question. What they're really looking at is your ability to uh, address the topic, but to be a little more creative. And you will notice that the third question does build on the information you gave in the first two questions, especially the second question. So the first thing we need to think about is how can we connect the responses? Well, in question two, we are asked to give what kind of programs we like. Now, for the second question, we need to be specific in our response. So take this for example. And this is where I, I think a lot of students you know, oftentimes don't think about uh, what the test is really looking for. For example, a student might respond with, well, I like funny programs. Well, instead of saying funny programs, again, this is a great opportunity to demonstrate your vocabulary. Say, I love comedies. Comedies, of course, are funny programs. Instead of saying, I like sports, say something specific, like, I prefer professional hockey, especially the NHL. And instead of saying, I usually watch the news, we could be more specific. I love to watch CNN or the BBC. So notice we've chosen very specific terms here. Instead of just saying funny programs, we said comedies. Sports, we said professional hockey. News, we said CNN or the BBC. So part of the idea here is when we address the second question, it really can help us provide a better answer for the third question. So for example, if we take one of these examples and then elaborate, we can add more information and details. So here's an example. So for thinking about that the second question, let's imagine that we answered the second question with, I prefer comedies. Now look what I put for the third question. So describe your favorite television program. Now of course this is my response, but follow along. My favorite program is Seinfeld, which was a comedy program on NBC for about 10 years. It was extremely funny. The main character was Jerry Seinfeld. He was a comedian who lived in New York City, and uh, he had three friends. Uh, George, his best friend, lied all the time and always got into trouble. Uh, Elaine, his ex-girlfriend, and uh, Kramer, his wacky next-door neighbor. I watched this show faithfully every week to see what kind of adventures they would have. Now, first off, you'll notice the response was 30 seconds, or around 30 seconds. And I think that's certainly important. We need to think about filling the time when we give a response. So I think that's the first thing we need to address. Is filling the time important? Well, again, the TOEIC doesn't actually you know, specify that you must fill all 30 seconds. But I think it's probably a good idea to do so. This does relate to that idea of a completeness. So again, when they're listening to your response, they want to see, did you give an answer that, that basically filled most of the time with good information? Now, we'll talk more about this when we look at our next videos, when we talk more about giving free responses. But for now, let's examine some basic information. So I think that's the first thing we need to address. Is filling the time important? Well, again, the TOEIC doesn't actually you know, specify that you must fill all 30 seconds. But I think it's probably a good idea to do so. This does relate to that idea of a completeness. So again, when they're listening to your response, they want to see, did you give an answer that, that basically filled most of the time with good information? Now, we'll talk more about this when we look at our next videos, when we talk more about giving free responses. But for now, let's examine some basic information. First off, when I answer the question, I, I was very, very direct. But the first thing you need to keep in mind is since this is an open-ended question, there really is no objectively right or wrong answer. I could choose any program I like. No, no program is going to be better than another. I'm not going to get a better score if I say I prefer the news instead of comedies. The most important thing is the answer has to be relevant first. But notice what I did. I gave a very brief introduction. I identified the program. So instead of just saying my favorite program is a comedy, I actually got very specific. I said my favorite program is Seinfeld, which was a, a comedy on television for many years here in the United States. Then, when I described this, the show, uh, I got very, very detailed. I gave names of characters. Uh, I described where, where Jerry lived, his profession. So I got even very uh, specific here in my response. 
And then notice the question doesn't exactly say why I like these shows. Why is it my favorite? But I did include at least two reasons. If you notice, I said at the beginning, I found it extremely funny. And even more important, I watched it because I wanted to see what kind of adventures they would have. So in this case, I gave at least two kind of basic reasons as to why this was my favorite program as well. So again, it doesn't say why. But I think that was part of the idea of the question. If I'm describing my favorite program, I probably should include at least a reason. And this is something to think about for all of the question responses on this part of the test. So think of the third question as usually an opportunity to go into more detail, and especially connecting to those first two questions, most likely the second question. And if you think about it, a 30-second response is usually around 50 to 70 words, which is not including articles or prepositions or other short words. But I really think it's more important that we need to fill the time with quality information rather than just listing words and ideas. And again, we'll talk more about this when we get to uh, the, some of the final tasks on the TOEIC when it comes to putting together more uh, elaborate responses to uh, the express opin an opinion task uh, at the end of the video series. Now, something I would like to address right now, and something we kind of talked a little bit about in the previous video, was using good vocabulary. But I think now is a great opportunity to talk about avoiding the blahs. Now, what are the blahs? Well, the blahs are actually referring to blah words. Blah words usually are words that are not very specific. So I think the first thing we need to recognize on, this, on the TOEIC is that we really are looking at our ability to express ourselves. So we need to use good, specific vocabulary words. I think too often students want to rely on words that have general or vague meanings. And this is what I mean by calling, by calling these the blah words. These are the words that uh, are used so often they almost lose all their meaning. So for example, if you look on the left side, these are some of the most common uh, you know, blah words that students use. And on the right side, here are some things I might suggest to actually uh, make your response a little more interesting. Instead of saying good or great, say something like outstanding or excellent. Instead of saying it was nice, you could say it was pleasant. Instead of saying it was bad, say something stronger, like it was disappointing or awful. Instead of fun, you could say it was thrilling or exciting. Instead of mad or angry, you could say something infuriated me or upset me. And finally, happy, we could say something even stronger, overjoyed or elated. These particular words can help make our responses even more interesting when we give a response on this part of the test. So as we mentioned in the previous video, the TOEIC really does place more emphasis on the words and ideas you use. I think it's more important than just the grammatical structure. So in other words, I think that using strong vocabulary can cover up for other problems. As you practice for the test, really try to include specific and interesting vocabulary in your responses. Now let's look at responding to questions with information, which are the next sets of questions on the test. And again, let's just jump in with the example that they've given us. First, let's read the prompt. In this part of the test, you will answer three questions based on the information provided. You will have 30 seconds to read the information before the questions begin. For each question, begin responding immediately after you hear a beep. No additional preparation time is provided. You will have 15 seconds to respond to questions 7 and 8, and 30 seconds to respond to question 9. Now first off, you will see a graphic like this on the computer screen. And the screen, this itself, will stay on the screen the entire time. Now as you look at it, lots, there's lots of information to communicate here. So the first question is to think about, well, what am I looking for? What should I be looking at in those first 30 seconds? Well, really, the answer is kind of simple. You should be looking at everything, from the very, very top at the logo that you see here, and then making your way down all the way to the bottom here at this last part. And in fact, especially paying attention to something like this, because oftentimes students ignore this information. So I think that's a great opportunity to bring up our, our first trick of the video, and that is 
the fine print. Now, what is the fine print? Well, generally, uh, on graphic or visual or oriented information or text heavy information, uh, the fine print refers to the text that you usually see printed at the bottom. That's often very small and easy to ignore. Now, we often see the fine print at the bottom of contracts or even on television commercials. So this is usually where the legal information uh, is required. So when they have to give the legal requirements or you know, on, on those commercials about medicine where they give all the dangerous side effects, they usually give them at the bottom of the screen in very small print. And most people usually ignore this information, mostly because it's either too small to read or it contains words and ideas that are too difficult to understand or in a television commercial, uh, it usually goes by too fast for us to pay attention. So this is part of the idea of the trick of the TOEIC. We need to pay attention to every little detail on the graphic, including that fine print at the bottom, because the questions might be at, the questions asked on the test uh, certainly can come from anywhere on this. Now we address this a little bit uh, in the TOEIC reading sections and listening sections that they could really uh, you know involve everything that we see on the screen or in the booklet. So in this case, we need to make sure we pay attention to every part. So once again, not only just pay attention to you know, this fine print at the bottom. Notice it says it's not included in the registration fee. That's what this little thing is here. This is called an asterisk. And an asterisk generally is where it shows us where there's some special information, exceptions, you know, that kind of thing. Um, we often need to pay attention to that information that's usually listed somewhere at the top. So for example, as I look up here and say, oh, here is the asterisk this little star. So for example, lunch, which is at 1 p.m. here, is not included in the registration fee. Now where can we find the registration fee? Well, looking at this information, we see that the registration fee is here at the bottom. So this price that we have to pay, individuals or members of the business information community, in this case, lunch is not included in either of those costs. Now, of course, we haven't discussed the graphic itself in much detail. That's because I kind of want us just to go ahead and jump in first and then discuss how the graphic is playing an important part uh, in the task itself. So now what I want us to do is we're just going to jump in. So uh, listen now and answer these questions. Now remember, the graphic will stay on screen the entire time. Hello, I'm calling about a conference on May 27th. I saw advertised in the newspaper. Uh, it's about starting your own business. Uh, I was hoping you could give me some information. Question 7. Could you tell me what time the conference starts and how long it will last? Question 8. How much does conference attendance cost? Question 9. I may not be available for the full day. Could you give me information about the activities in the morning before lunchtime? Okay, now let's look at the answers. Could you tell me what time the conference starts and how long it will last? The essential answer is at 9 a.m. and it will last at least seven hours. 
Question 8. How much does conference attendance cost? The essential answer is $95 for individuals and $75 for members. Lunch is not included. Question 9. I may not be available for the full day. Could you give me information about the activities in the morning before lunchtime? The essential information can be found here in this part of the graphic. At 9 a.m. they're offering a, present, a seminar called Financing Your Business. It's in room 210. It's offered by Martha Ross, a certified public accountant. And then at 11 a.m. you have a choice. You can go to room 312 and see the presentation How to Promote Your Own Business with Howard Brown from Brown Publishers. Or you could go to room 318 and see Planning for Profit, which is offered by John Phillips of Phillips Associates. Now, what do we notice in the response? Well, first off, we notice that the prompt is usually some written text or graphic, and the questions are basically going to follow from that. Now, much like questions 4 through 6, the first two questions are shorter, while the third one is a little longer to allow a little more depth. However, one big difference is, unlike questions 4 to 6, we do not get to see the questions. In fact, we don't get to see any other visual information except for the graphic. And once again, we have to give relevant and complete information. So I think that's part of the trick that we notice here, is that on the graphic, we had some choices and extra information that we had to include. Now, this is what I mentioned earlier. Uh, going back to a concept we discussed, uh, we discussed back in the TOEIC reading video series, and that's the concept of genre. If you remember, the genre is basically a way to kind of think about the organization of the written text, and it allows you to kind of quickly prepare for a response. So the idea here is that genre is referring to the type of that text. Now, remember, on the TOEIC, we usually will see... Uh, these types of readings on the test. Uh, advertisements, conference schedules, travel schedules, receipts, announcements, meeting agenda. These are the more common types of TOEIC uh, you know, texts, genre-related texts that we see. And the idea is that each one has a certain organization and expectation. Now, the, the idea here is that many of them make perfect TOEIC speaking prompts. If you think about it, they have logos and slogans. You know, like in our picture, we had a, a slogan and a logo right at the top. They include lots of numbers, especially times and dates. They include locations, people's names. And they also share a somewhat similar organizational style. The idea here is that it, you can kind of look at these and quickly read them in a short period of time. Remember, on this part of the test, you only have 30 seconds to look at the information. So they don't want to give you things that have a lot of text. Instead, they want to give you something that is very graphically organized. So in our last kind of comment here, the idea is that by looking at this information and noticing how uh, it's visually oriented, we really need to pay attention to its organization. So again, the more familiar you are with these types of readings, uh, the easier it will be to find the information you need very quickly. So again, notice with the uh, format. Here at the top, we've got the date, the location, uh, and then the actual offerings of the seminars. The key is to think about, uh, again, how this information can be organized visually. And of course, at the bottom, the cost. And we mentioned before that fine print. Now, we discussed this quite a bit in the, to in the TOEIC reading uh, video series. But again, I want you to look at the p potential areas for tricks. Uh, again, right in the middle of the text, we have a choice between two things at 11 a.m. So that particular trick here is something we do have to pay attention to. That fine print we mentioned before, the asterisk that you see here connected to information we saw at the bottom. Finally, with the registration fee, we had to pay attention is that there were two different fees for people who were not members and for people who were members of the Business Information Center. 
So again, we have to really make sure we pay attention to the organization and format of the graphics that you see and really kind of recognize how that information could be tested on the test. Now remember, the first two questions are usually going to be fairly simple. We, we need to be able to identify the information very quickly and visually. The third question obviously is going to require more time, but keep in mind, it is not a creative response. It's information based on what you see on the screen. So that's really one of the differences here with questions 7 through 9, is that questions 7 through 9, all of the answers will involve information we see from a visual text or graphic like this. So our final thoughts for this video series, for this video. As mentioned in our previous video, uh, recording yourself is the best way to help prepare. However, this is something I want to mention in this particular video. Uh, it's, it would be very difficult for me to recommend other resources to help you prepare for this part of the test. Because really, the specific nature now of these questions, uh, you really do need a good preparation textbook to help you with the rest of the series, rest of the part of the test. So again, I've mentioned this before, but I would highly recommend getting the Grant True book. Uh, Tactics for Toic Speaking and Writing. You can find this for uh, from Oxford Press. And again, uh, it's, it's included on our website. You can kind of find the information that you need. So uh, rather than have me suggest different places for you to, to find you know, free material, I really think because this particular part of the test is very specific, you're going to need a good preparation book to help you. And after that, that would be the perfect time to record yourself giving answers. Because at this point, you're not given any preparation time. So, in reviewing the questions and comparing them, let's look at questions 4 through 6 first. Remember that all of the questions are related to each other, and each one builds on the next question. Remember, you're given no preparation time to prepare for them. The first two questions are shorter than the last one. Remember, you're given only 15 seconds to answer the first two, but 30 seconds to answer the last one. Remember, the third question does require more elaboration. And you are allowed to see the questions during this part of the test. Questions 7 through 9, however, are related to a written prompt, which usually is graphic in nature. And you have to use that information to answer the questions. Remember, you're given 30 seconds to read the text, but after that, no additional time to prepare for the questions. Remember, the first two are shorter than the last. So again, the first two questions you're given only 15 seconds each, whereas the last one you're given 30 seconds. And again, that third question will require more elaboration because you have to give more information. And finally, on this part, you are not allowed to see the question, but you are allowed to see the graphic the whole time. So in this case, uh, we're going to finish the video here by, by mentioning that Again, with these last few tasks on the TOEIC, you're really going to need some very specific preparation materials. So once again, I would recommend going to the ETS's website. Uh, there are lots of other helpful products they have to purchase. Uh, again, I've recommended the Tactics for TOEIC textbook series. That's by Grant True, both the listening and reading, and especially here the speaking and writing. Remember the uh, speaking, uh, the great thing about the textbook is it includes actual examples. And I think that's what you need in order to really understand what the test is looking for. And finally, we do have a new preparation website, uh, which you can find in the link at the bottom of this video. But once again, uh, just as a final word, most of the tasks we're looking at in this video and the next two videos are going to be very specific in nature. So I would really recommend buying that uh, Tactics for TOEIC textbook series. It's, it's really very good. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time for video four, Propose a Solution. <laughs>